Hello my sweet friends and welcome to the Art Cake Experience channel. Today I'm going to be doing something for Easter. We're going to be doing a gnome, uh, an Easter gnome. Very cute that I found an illustration that got me inspired to do it. And uh, But the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do, today we're going to be using um, modeling paste. This is from uh, Cerecino Pasta Model and I'm going to be coloring this in blue but I don't want to mix this little part of blue also modeling paste from uh, Cerecino with this big chunk of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit a little piece of that white I'm going to start mixing this just to start with a uh, with the mixing of the color right so I just insert this together and let me just move this so it won't be moving. And I'm going to start just mixing this one. So I'm just going to pull the paste because I want to check the consistency of it. And as you can see, it's still like not well mixed, right? So I'm just going to keep mixing, mixing and giving some elasticity to this paste, right? As I mix it. Okay, as you can see, we're starting to get an even color, but if I pull the paste, I can see that I still have some white in it. So I'm just gonna pull it for a couple of more times to make sure that all the white is really mixed or the blue is really mixed into the white. And once it's absolutely mixed and I have the sugar paste the way and the tone that I wanted, this is not gonna be too light. Because I'm going to be adding more uh, white into this because I want to make it lighter, even lighter. But now, as you can see, the paste is quite good. So from this now, I'm going to mix it into this because the proportion is still similar to the first one. It's not such a small part of blue into a big part of white. Why? Because this was going to take you longer and uh, it's not gonna mix that well. So that's why I like to do it in little pieces. So let me mix this one and I'll show you the result. Now I have the blue that I want. It's a very pale, very light baby blue, perfect for Easter. And this is going to be the base of the body of my gnome. So watch it out and see how this gnome is done. And it's gonna be very, very cute at the end, I promise. So we're going to start with a bowl of sugar paste that is more or less, I'm going to say the size of the palm of my hand. This is approximately, I'm going to weight it, is 130 grams of sugar paste, sugar paste, of modeling paste, guys. Today we're working with modeling paste. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just start kneading it very, very, very well because I want to have all these little wrinkles go away and get the paste quite smooth, okay? The advantage of using modeling paste is that it is strong enough that you can only use modeling paste. You don't have to use any internal uh, support for uh, pieces that are not too tall or that don't require any specific movement or weight of sitting. This one is sitting down, so it's very easy to make. It doesn't require many, much structure. And the good thing about this paste is that it hardens enough to support all the weight of the details that we're going to add, but it's still malleable and flexible. So you can still model it without having any wrinkles or any marks in the paste or cracking because it dried too hard, right? That happens sometimes that, uh, especially when we add uh, CMC to the sugar paste, if we add too much, the paste uh, trends, um, tends to dry very fast. And if you try to move it or change it, it cracks so, or get wrinkly. So that's the advantage of a modeling paste. Now I'm doing this with the ball because I want to get rid of all the markings and all the lines that I have in there. Okay, just apply some pressure. And uh, it's quite, it's quite soft, but I'm going to leave this part that has some little wrinkles to the button, right? This is going to be the base. And from there, I'm going to start creating a cone shape. The gnomes are very easy to make because it's actually a cone with a lot of things on top. <laughs> this is what a gnome is. Now, this gnome is going to be a bit different because it's not going to have a pointy hat. It's going to have a round hat. 
because he's going to be dressed as an Easter bunny. It's going to be really cute. You'll see. Okay. So now I have it. Okay. It's a pear shape, but it's not pointing the top. It's rounded. And from here, I'm going to build, it's very simple. From here, I'm going to start building up my gnome, okay? So I think this is going to be the front of the gnome. Just soften some of the markings of my fingers. Perfect. I'm going to let it set just for a little bit so it will hold all of the little things that we're gonna put on top of this. Now I have a little ball of approximately 24 grams of white sugar paste that I'm going to cut in half to create his feet. Why so big? Because this gnome is going to have big rabbit feet. <laughs> it's gonna be really cute. Now I'm gonna create a ball. From this ball, I'm going to press in the bottom just to create a longer shape here, okay, but still round. Just press a little bit more in the button, leave it in the top, okay? And now using a very small rolling pin, this is used for uh, flowers, uh, usually for flowers. I'm going to press from the bottom up and create this shape here, okay? And as you can see, I left some uh, round shape here. I didn't press right from the bottom, but from here, right? And with my modeling tool, for the modeling tools, you can use many things. I have uh, this tool by Innovative Sugar, Sugar Works, perfect. I have a Dresden tool that you can use this part. And I have this tool from the Wilton, um, from the Wilton set. This one, you can use it as well. So let's start with this one. I'm going to mark three lines, right? Or two lines to create his toes. See, you can also use this one here and actually make a deeper incision here, indentation, or you can use this one as well. Maybe create a deeper one, also a deeper indentation, and just go all the way up till here, right? And with this, we create our paw. <laughs> it's a cute. We're going to leave it like this first because I want to add more details while we do the second one, just as we did this one. Now I'm going to use a little bit of um, pink sugar paste and I'm going to create two little balls of, oh, let's see, this is nothing. Uh, centimeters. Where do I have centimeters here? Uh, millimeters. So it, this will be like five millimeters, probably. Very small. I'm gonna press and I'm gonna elongate this more like an oval shape. Okay, by pressing the sides and pressing on my hand and using just a little bit. You won't need it because this is very sticky, but using a little bit of water, just some water with the brush. I'm just going to add one in here and press. I'm gonna do the same here with the other one. Sort of like make it round and start elongating it. Okay, good. So now it's more like an oval. And this is gonna go here. And three little ones, and I'm going to add three little ones here as well in each of his paws.
feet are done and I'm going to glue this feet uh, let me just remark the indentation here in this one because it got a little bit lost in the modeling part and I'm going to glue these two right here in front isn't this cute There you go. Okay, right now it's just moving. Let me just press it here. Actually, I'm going to put it up a little bit. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna leave this to dry and we're gonna move on and do the, the nose and the beard of the nose. Okay, so we took a little bit of the flesh color sugar paste. Okay. And I'm going to make a ball and sort of like an oval again, because I'm going to make the nose with this one. I'm going to leave it here. I'm not going to glue it yet because I want to put the beer first, but just to get an idea, maybe I have to make it bigger. I'm not sure. And for beer, I'm going to take some white uh, modeling paste. Okay. I want to show you this because this is how you find, the, this is how you get the modeling paste out of the bag. It's hard. And you think, oh, this is too hard. But as you start kneading and baking pressure into the paste, it starts uh, getting soft and it gets soft quite fast. Okay, see, starts getting soft. And as you can see now, it's not well kneaded, it's not well uh, blend, but to just, keep, uh, to just keep kneading and you're gonna have a great paste to work with. Now that I have my white sugar paste in a very soft ball, I'm going to start pressing and I want to create a sort of like a cone or triangular, a triangular shape for the beer, but it's not going to be just like perfect and neat. I want to give it some movement with my hands. Okay, and now measure it, it's big. So I'm just gonna cut the top part because this is too much. And now I'm going to flatten this part up here because this is the part that's going to be here, right? And still, still a little bit thick. So I'm just going to press it and make it thinner. Press it down, press it down. Make it thinner. And also I'm gonna cut a little bit of the button because it's too much. And I'm going to create that triangular shape here. Just press it with my hands. And now I measure. I think it's still a little bit big. So I'm going to cut more of the top. And I'd rather always start with a lot and remove the excess that I don't need, then starting with just a few and not enough sugar paste, and then have to be pulling and pulling because the paste sh uh, loses the consistency. Okay, I think it's great. Now, I don't want to leave it like that, so I'm going to create some um, with my resin tool. I'm just going to move this from here. With my resin tool, I'm going to be creating some movement into this beer, right? So just make curves and make sure that you press here just to create these little parts in the bottom, right? There you go. Now to the other side. Okay. There you go. And we have a beautiful beer for our gnome. I still think it's quite big. Because also when we did when we uh when we used the dressing tool, we pulled the pull the paste down. So removing more <laughs> and just pressing here on the top. And I think now we're good. Perfect. We're good now. So I'm going to glue this part with water using my watercolor brush. This is 
going to go here, perfect. This feet is tumbling to the side. Great. And now I can measure the size of the nose. I think it's going to be a little bit bigger than this. So I'm just going to add more sugar paste and create this little ball for the nose. Okay, let me just do this right here. Okay, our bunny gnome is getting there. It's looking really good. Now we're going to make him some arms and hands. So for the arms, I'm going to take a little bit of sugar paste. This I'm gonna divide in two. Let me measure how much is this. It's probably a lot, but we'll see. This is, uh, let me just see, 10 grams. 10 grams of the blue sugar paste. I think it's a lot. Actually, from this 10 gram, we'll probably do both of the, of the arms, but let's start with this. And I'm going to make a long shape, but thinner here, okay? It's sort of like a teardrop shape. And let me make sure it is big, because I don't want it to be so, th so thick, right? So I'm going to uh, roll it a little bit more make it longer, and then cut the excess that I'm going to be using. Okay, maybe a little, maybe just a little bit more. Actually, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut here. I'm gonna do the other arm just to measure that is the same size as this one. here there you go and they are the same size both of them and now to glue it into the body I'm gonna show you one thing what happens if I don't do anything here this looks like the arm is just glue in there so it plays in there but what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it to the side and create a side cut a diagonal cut because that way this cut is going to see it or set <laughs> in the shoulder, right? So now you can see it like a shape in there. And the arm is going to move down. Let me just add some water to the inner part of the arm just to make sure it glues, right? And I'm going to do the same with the other, the other arm. Create a di diagonal cut in here. From here, right? Place it right here. Okay, okay, dokie. Let me just add some water inside so I know it will glue to the beer. Perfect. Okay, now the hands are gonna be very simple. I'm going to take two little balls of approximately one centimeter each. Right? You can actually do this before you place the arms. I'm doing it afterwards, okay? Just press and press, right? You have a thinner part, you have a thicker part. On this thinner part side, this one that is thinner, I'm going to make a cut and like I'm cutting a triangle here, okay? So imagine this is the thumb, this is the rest of the hand. I'm going to do the same in the other one, but towards the other side. Okay, here and here, there you go. And from there, I'm going to bring out the thumb around this part. And in the bottom, I'm just going to press to create the hand here. Very simple. Okay, you just want a thumb. This is what I call a mitten hand. This looks like a mitten, right? So it's one. And just press here. And 
And there we go. We have, whoops, two hands, one for each side. And these little hands, I'm going to glue them, thumbs up, one in here. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to press a little bit with my round tool, just to have a place where the hand is gonna sit. Same in the other arm. You could have done this before placing the arms that I didn't do it. But as you can see, the paste is so malleable that you can still do that. And I'm gonna place one hand in like, like this, one hand in front of the other, because it's going to be holding some things in his hands. There you go. Perfect. Now we're going to do the hat and then the little details that the nam is going to be holding in his hand. Now to make the hat, actually we're not gonna make a hat. We're just going to make the bottom of the hat because this is going to be the hat. It's gonna be quite funny. Usually with the other gnomes, we, we, we do a cone, very pointy cone, and the top is the hat. In this case, it's going to be this round part of his head. And now I'm just going to roll out uh, like a, I don't know how you call it, a snake, like a sausage, <laughs> but very thin of sugar, modeling paste. Same color that we use for the body. Okay. And I'm going to glue this all around his head, including the top of his nose and beard, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, let me just going to put it together here and with my scissors, I don't know if you can see there, with my small pair of scissors, I'm just going to, okay, cut it there and blend it. You can blend it using the, one of your tools. This is another advantage of the modeling paste is that you can add You can blend things very well. Okay, and another thing that I'm going to blend is here on the top of the hat because I don't want it to look like it's just something placed in there, right? So we're gonna start blending this a little bit as well. the bottom of the the base of the hat is blend we're going to do two cute bunny ears okay for the bunny ears i'm going to use some white uh, modeling paste okay i'm going to start just for you guys to get an idea because this is probably going to be too much i'm going to start with uh 10 grams it's a lot but 10 grams this is as much as we use for the arms and I'm going to roll it out like this, leaving this uh, round part here in both in both uh, ends. I'm gonna roll it out and I'm gonna cut it in half. I rolled it out until what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centimeters. So now I'm gonna cut it four. One, two, three, four is right here. We're gonna cut it in half. Okay, and using my dressing tool, first I'm gonna press, right? 
and this one as well with my finger. You don't need anything else. If you want to use the small rolling pin, you can also use the small rolling pin to press it out, okay? But you can use your fingers. And with the dress and tool, I'm gonna press in the middle, okay? And pinch it here on the bottom. Okay, now using a little bit of uh, the pink sugar paste. I was gonna say yellow, I don't know. I was looking at something yellow, probably. Pink sugar paste. I'm going to add it to the center of the ears, bunny ears. Okay. Just uh, press it here. Just where I use the dressing tool. Don't worry about this because we're going to probably cut the excess that we don't use. So I made a ball. I didn't show you what I did before. I made a ball. From the ball, I rolled it out into small sausage. You can see. Okay, from there I pressed it. You can press it on your hand. And from there I place it right in the middle. And just keep pressing. Okay, now I'm gonna cut this part here because we're not gonna need this. There you go. This is out. And now I'm just going to pinch here, maybe bend it a little bit. And here is where the ears are, <laughs> it's gonna be so cute, where the ears are gonna be, right? I brought, I have here two toothpicks, but I think we're only going to use one. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut this toothpick in half. Uh, this is a wire cutter, but you can cut toothpicks with it, apparently. <laughs> I'm going to change this into a smaller uh, base. So now I have more movement, movement here and Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. So I don't damage this with the other one, with the other um, uh, toothpick. I'm just going to create the hole where I'm gonna put the ears, okay? I'm gonna add some water in there. And now I'm going to put it here and adding some water in here as well. Whoops, sorry. I'm just going to press this and make sure the ear is behind the base of the, of the hat, right? And just fix it to the place or to the movement that you wanna give it. Maybe if you wanna make an, an ear lower than the other, I'll show you. Let's for now, just make sure that the ear is in place. Remember, if you're doing these edible toppers for kids or for anybody, to remind them if it has any structure in it, warn them if it has any toothpick or any piece of wire or any um, styrofoam, okay? Remember to talk to your client about that. You can even talk in advance if it's a piece to, most of my clients take their uh, toppers and they keep them, they preserve them. So they don't mind if it has any structure, but I have a, I have a couple clients and the kids like to eat it. So I don't put any structure in it. I try to make it a hundred percent edible. Okay. So here are the ears. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bring them back a little bit so they don't cover its face and the tip of the ear is going to go down. Oh my goodness. Isn't it? Isn't this the cutest thing you've ever seen for Easter? I mean, it's cute, right? Okay, perfect. So now that we have this, we're going to concert, we're going to do a little detail to put in his hand. Okay, so this little guy is going to have some flowers. So I'm just going to take a little ball of, not some flowers, flowers. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to make two small leaves 
for the flowers. And the flowers are going to be in his in one of his ear. Okay. With the dress and tool, I'm going to create this shape for the leaves, and it's going to be right here. to make him a yellow flower. I'm going to use a, an ejector cutter in the shape of a flower. So let me just roll this out with my small rolling pin. Put some water in here and let me show you. Okay. And the center of the flower is going to be white. So just a small white center little ball in here. Okay. Now I'm going to make him a carrot because he's a rabbit, right? So for the carrot, I'm going to take some of my uh, orange modeling paste, also made with Sargina paste. I make some uh, yellow and red in here. I think it's quite, big. no, it's perfect. I want a big, big, big carrot. So I just make it very, very thin in the bottom. Also, I'm going to create with the green a couple of leaves in here, just like the ones that I did for the flower, but just a little bit bigger. Also with the dressing tool, I'm going to create flower shape and I'm going to add here with this tool some lines to the carrot. Oh, this is so cute. I love it. Okay. And I'm going to make him, uh, there's no Easter bunny without an egg, an Easter egg. And it's going to be purple, of course, because it's going to be for, for a channel, for the Archaic Experience channel. Everything is purple in here. Purple is my favorite color. Even my nails are purple. Do you see? I have Easter nails. <laughs> oh my God, I probably edit this out of the video. What a shame. This is too big. Okay, I'm gonna make it smaller. Okay, and I'm just gonna press a little bit in one of, make an, I made an oval, not a ball, and just press it a little bit on the top to create that egg shape. And with a darker shade of purple, I'm going to cut out, let me just, do something. I'm going to put this here and here, and I'm going to cut out here some stripes. Let me just roll it out first. And to cut stripes, usually what I use is I take a blade of an X Acto knife, like this, okay? because with this, you're not bringing any sugar paste with you. You're just making cuts, right? And the good thing about having these little mats is that you can follow the line. Okay. Let me just see, okay, here. So from here, let me just put this. Okay. So from here, I can start cutting very thin stripes of the modeling paste. I think four is enough. We don't need more. Four is more than enough. Put this away before somebody cuts his fingers. That'd be me. But I'm always getting cut because I'm not leave stuff. Just going to remove this one. 
that we're also not going to need. And I'm not even going to put water in it because it's so sticky. Oops. That I'm just going to place it here on top. Right? Take another one. Place it on top. And take another one, just three. I told you four was enough. Actually, three was enough. There's one side of this egg that we're not going to see because it's going to be in his hands. So I'm just going to bring everything to the back. In the front, you can look at the stripes of the Easter egg. In the back, it's not going to look so pretty, but nobody's going to see it. I'm just going to cut this away. And I'm going to glue this to our little guy. So in one hand, he's going to have a big Easter egg right there. And in the other hand, he's going to have a huge carrot right here. And just one more little detail that this gnome had in the illustration is that it had polka dots all around his onesies because it's like in a onesie, right? Like, take a look, it isn't he cute? I didn't put the polka dots before, but I think it will add a very, very cute finish. So I'm going to take an edible marker and do the polka dots on his onesie. So using a blue edible market marker from uh, Squire's Kitchen, I'm just going to add some cute little dots all over his pajamas. You can do this with little balls of uh, sugar paste as well. It's going to take you longer and you have to cut all the little balls in uh, the same size so it will look cute. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to use the marker here. And around his hat is the cutest thing ever. Illustrations are an awesome uh, way of inspiration i love to use illustrations or inspirations because it's usually something that is not done before in 3d as as this as a as a piece uh i think it's inspiring for the artist who made the illustration to have his design turn into a little doll sugar paste modeling piece and it gives us, I think for me, it gives me a lot of room to imagine the 3D part of the design. I'd love to bring uh, characters in 2D into 3D designs. And with this, oh my God, look at this cutie. With this, we finish our little Easter gnome, he believes that he is the Easter rabbit and he wants to bring you a little egg and a little carrot. Happy Easter, everyone. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to go and check out my online school where you can find more tutorials and classes on sugar paste modeling just for you. Thank you so much for watching and as always, my little friends, my sweet, sweet, sweet friends, Stay creative. Bye-bye.